Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to be um, talking about a piece of furniture and showing you how we repair something that's broken. I'm just going to, it's got glass in it and we're just going to remove the glass completely. It's going to get have a whole new, updated, possibly quite bohemian, work in progress um, sort of finish on it and I want you to follow along and see what we've done with it but first of all I'm going to kind of show talk you through the piece because it's quite nice it's just got it's got broken glass so it's got quite nice um I quite like this piece at the top it's got the little lock and key for the cupboards it's a corner cupboard but this is where the problem is if you can see that there there's this glass is smashed um this cupboard door does open I think it's got a little lock there um, so this is going to this the, both glass panels we're going to remove and Martin's going to put chicken wire behind both of these panels and I'm going to give it a real sort of really bright finish something really nice and cheerful and this part this top part actually this bottom part is actually like a kind of table that it sits on so I'll can paint them in two separate parts um, but this is the piece it's got lovely nice high legs I liked it because of its height. I didn't like it because of this. So I got a little bit of off and I said to Martin, we can put chicken wire in it. So this is what we're about to do. So Martin started by um, removing all the little screws. There was flathead and star screws in it. So it was a little bit awkward. And um, that's all we did here. So Martin's just um, removing all the glass, um, he's wearing eye protection and glasses and um, gloves so that he doesn't cut his hands and he's just pulling out all the bits of glass. This one here, this one, the glass has already been cut out of, been banged out of. So that's that bit. So what Martin's done is he's attached chicken wire to here. Now let me just explain what's going to happen next. When I take it back, I'm not in the stable today, so I'm in the house. I'm going to fill in here. There was some sort of putty and I'm going to fill this here with paper clay. The other one is actually worse. It's all just chipping out. So I'm going to fill this with paper clay and let it harden. On this edge here, which is not the tidiest of edges, I'm pushing in all the pieces of wire that's going to stick out over the edge like these. And you should wear gloves. I know this. <laughs> um, and because what I'm going to do is I've got really thick hessian that I'm going to apply down here just to tidy this all this edge all out. When I get it indoors, what I'm going to do to it is I'm going to rust the chicken wire. So I'm going to do a rusty paint finish on this chicken wire. Once I've done my paper clay, I'm going to do my rusty job and then I'm going to put my hessian and then I'm probably going to paint over my hessian as well just so it all looks really seamless. Um, it's just that we try to get it down into here and what was happening in that sort of putty substance was just keeping on breaking off. It was going to make a mess of the, the, the actual doors and then I would have no doors. So um, this is what we've done so far. So we're just going to go ahead and Martin's going to, because I've been holding it, <laughs> I'm his assistant. What I've been doing is holding it. Um, so I'm telling him where to put it. Uh, so um, we're going to go into the other door and then we'll get back inside and we'll start all the, the fun, nice bits. Okay, so we've cut some hessian strips. It's not the nicest of hessian, but it's that really thick stuff um, that you can uh, use to make pelmets out of, you know, cutting pelmets. But um, it's what we had and we are going to paint this, but it's just to cover up the metal on um, the backs of the doors just to give it a nicer finish. So I've got my hot glue gun and I'm just going to literally glue this down here. It's just going to give it a nicer finish. So I'm just going to go ahead and we can speed this part up. So we've covered the really ugly, wiry piece with this really hard, heavy duty hessian. As I said, it's going to be painted just to give it a really nice, a nice finish from the inside. 
Okay, so I'm going to put a rust finish on this galvanised wire. It doesn't look very pretty at the moment and we want to kind of age it. So the colours I'm using are Athenian Black, Annie Sloan, Hornflower, which is a brown by Annie Sloan, and Barcelona Orange. Now I've got these three here on my plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some baking soda just to kind of thicken it all up a bit and just dump it there. And I've kind of put a little bit of horn flour and a little bit of the Athenian black. And first of all, I'm just going to kind of, I'm now going to kind of go to town with all of them. You don't want it too orangey. Like at the moment, that's too brown. And you're going to have to do both sides of this as well. And this is just going to make it look a little bit better, to be honest with you, than the sort of galvanised. If you want a little bit more texture, just make sure that you rub your brush in your... And you're just kind of stippling it. It is messy. Make sure you mix in your... At the moment, that's not... get the other side in a minute you can at this point add a little bit of cinnamon if you want but I'm not going to just makes it look a little bit better and it'll make the look at the end a little bit better as well I keep getting some more black out because I want a little bit more black than I want orange I think what I'm going to actually go and do is I'm going to go and stop the camera and I'm going to go and get some red because I'm wanting a little bit more of a radio tone in this so what I've done is I've put a little bit of primer red in that now. Now this is just kind of like the first coat. I'm just trying to get it all nice and thick and covered and take away that galvanised look. It's messy. Make sure you get right down into the edges. I'm just going to do this front and back. I'll turn it over in a moment and you'll see me doing the back of both sides of the doors. Now you remember, it is messy so you need to put a blankie down. Now I'm going to flip it. It already looks so much better than the other one. And just do the other side, but make sure you're not really touching up against the, the hessian too much. You are going to paint it, but you don't want it to be too messy. It's hard to tell really what's happening right now, but you'll you'll see it when it's done. It's, it's a much better look. Just kind of dabbling on the black there. And then the brown. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a plastic bag over this plate when I'm finished because I want to do the same thing with my hinges and my lock when I'm done. So I want this mix to work with. And I might want to do a little bit more of this over the, you know, a wee bit more rust on this if there's things that I think that I've missed. So it's best not to get rid of anything until you've finished all your steps. So I'm kind of happy with that. That's, that's pretty much what I'm looking for there. So using Annie Sloan paint, I want to custom make a colour. So I'm going to be using Antibes Green and Florence. I sometimes have to check because I get that in Provence confused. So I'm going to be using these two and possibly some Barcelona orange. But I'm going to start with these two first because I think I've got an idea of what kind of orange I'd like to mix. So I'll just balance those on here. I've given them a good stir, as you should do with chalk paint. So I'm probably going to start with a sort of half and half. I think that's 
probably quite good. I'm just gonna, I've got a little bit of a blankie behind me that I can wipe my hands on. And let's see how this starts, this sort of mix. No. Is this what I had imagined? I think I had imagined it a little bit darker. So I'm just going to add a little bit more Provence. Probably about that much. That is not very nice on the side of my can. I'm just going to make more mess. <laughs> now, am I thinking this is about the sort of color? I'm looking for what I'd describe as a nice sunny green. I think, I think I've got it there. So these are the two colors, this one and this one. And this is the color that I made. Now I'm pondering, maybe just a tiny, tiny little bit, just a tiny little bit of Barcelona orange. My Barcelona is quite thick, so I'm just going to do this, I think. Just give it a little bit of a lift. Put that there. I think I like this sort of colour. That's nice. This is the sort of green I had envisaged. I just need to make sure that there's no Barcelona orange left kicking around in that. There. So I'm going to do inside the back and the shell's a different colour. So all I'm doing with the green before I move it is this band here, the top, these two little sides and the sides. So I'm just going to get on and and paint them. Now this is going to take two coats of paint and it is going to have probably another colour put over the top of it. Maybe a darker sort of bluey green. But this is what I'm starting with. And instantly this piece should become more modern just by its colour. I wanted to completely sort of modernise it and I think colour is everything and I think with its sort of chicken wire rusty sort of doors I think it's going to look quite nice with the green. I might put a turquoise over the top of this but I think at the moment I'm set on a wet and kind of weighted on that. Now typical um chalk paint strokes every which way. Okay so there's one good coat of um, the colour mix that we applied onto the piece. I've painted the front of the cupboard doors. They're staying off just now because I want to paint the background of the cupboard so I'm leaving that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a colour wash and sort of rag it off. I've got one slightly damp cloth and one dry cloth. In here I have mixed a little bit of a Busson Blue and a little bit of florence just together to give it, it's just a slight darker than the shade it is. I've got pure florence with some water. Really watery because we're, we, you know, that's the, that's what we're aiming for, that sort of um, watery paint and some Barcelona orange just to kind of brighten it up. These are the three I'm going to be working with. And let's just get on and apply it in sections. I'm going to start up here. So I'm going to start down here on my piece. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to get rid of this brush. And I'm just going to start sort of applying. Now this is messy. You just have to kind of run with it. And in between this, 
I'm going to do a little bit of this. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to start blending these colours together over the top of your original green. You can use some water out of a mister. I'm quite, I think I'm looking a wee bit more. And you can kind of direct it whatever way you want it to go. I quite like this sort of dark blue up here, but that was come from, I had a little bit of the, I put some blue that hadn't quite mixed in there and that's quite nice. I think I'm going to go and get a little bit more of the Abusum Blue um, just to just to kind of do some of this because I'm really enjoying this sort of drip down here and I don't have any more of that. I can make it kind of do it myself. I can spritz in and make it move. Now, you don't have to have it terribly drippy. I quite like this here, so I'm going to leave this. I'm going to work on this rim here, but I'm going to go and get some more blue. So I've got my Abusum Blue and I'm just going to take it straight out of the can. I'm just using a little transfer stick just to kind of put some of that on while it's a bit wet. And then I spritz up and it doesn't matter if it drips. And your dry one to kind of blend that in. I don't want it looking like a Dalmatian dog. And if you think that's happening, pick one of your other colours and wash over it. But yeah, I think I think this under here is working for me. So what I'm gonna do is water and I'm just going to use this transfer stick to make it move now I'm kind of vowed with myself that I wasn't going to make this too heavily distressed because I'm not looking for that so I'm going to kind of quit soon on this but I can't have this big splodge here Yeah, that's probably enough on that. Now I'm going to introduce a little bit of the Barcelona orange because I like what's happened here and so I kind of want a little bit of a flourish over here. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just playing with the paint. Now I'm just kind of patting that that there and maybe some of that there. And pat that up. Because that kind of changes the colour. I'm wondering if I put some of this on this brush and just kind of run that through some of this. I'm scared it's getting a little bit too drippy looking. So if it gets a little bit too drippy, just push it back up. I'm just playing with it. I'm not... I think this now has got a little bit too much. So yeah. So I'm happy with this section here. I'm quite happy with this section here. I'm just going to start maybe introducing some of this and I'll move some of this paint out of the way for my legs. And I'm just letting it run and drip onto it. I've got my wet cloth here. I've got my dry cloth and I've got my... I'm going to make that run. I'm going to make that run. Let's see what comes out of that. I 
too dark there. And try and get rid of some of that stagnant water on the ground. So I'm going to just work around the whole piece now. You can see what I'm doing. I'm applying my my three colours and obviously my Abus and Blue straight out of the tin just to give it that sort of... I'm not... I think I like this, but I'm not... I'm not too sure whether that was maybe a little bit too orangey there. So I'm going to just do this and just get rid of that. And that'll drip down through it. Maybe some more of that. I quite like the colour on that. Yeah. Gravity is going to take its, you know, with the paint where it wants to go. So I think that's good. So I'm going to work on this side now, but I'll just keep going. I'll fast forward the rest now. You don't need to see me doing every single bit. Okay, so these are both the doors and in a minute we're going to distress the whole piece. Now, I want this piece heavily distressed and there's no better time to do it when there's an awful lot of water on the piece. So I've got a wet cloth and a dry cloth and I'm going to start taking some of this away. This is really wet. Now, I've kind of sorted these out into where um which way they go round so that i know and i want this to be quite i wanted to pull it back there because this is the bottom that's going to run across the green edge so wet cloth dry cloth and i want it Maybe some um maybe some here. Wet cloth. Dry cloth. And up here, up around the top here, we're gonna do um Kind of thing. So there's quite a lot of green up there, so we really want this top edge almost wiped away. Coming down here, round about the hinges, and this inside edge here, just a little bit. This is all the wet cloth stuff, now the dry cloth stuff. And I think that is that door done. You don't want your distress to look too contrived. If it's a funny shape and you think that's not showing what I'd like it to do. So that's that one. Now I'll swap over and I'll show you me just doing it quickly on the other one. This one's quite good because it's got this little ridge which will distress quite nicely this little ridge so we're not going to take all of it away but just some of it obviously round here where the hinges are so wet cloth dry cloth I don't like that so much so I'm just going to do a little bit of paint and a little bit of water over there you can fix things if you don't like them I think obviously round the keyhole wet cloth my cloth is getting really quite saturated now but it doesn't matter if I move the paint around some here this is my dry cloth so your dry cloth doesn't take off as much and your wet cloth takes off loads so you can do this and just have some texture I think that's probably enough with that one. I'm quite happy with that. Now the piece itself. Now the doors will go on tomorrow when this piece is completely dry. But it's just the same principle. 
Now this paint has been sitting on here a lot longer, although it's wet, it's going to be a little more tricky to come off. So we're going to have to think about how we want to distress it. So I think maybe here, and this is my wet cloth, and I'm having to rub a little bit harder here. My paint's not as... I don't like the shape of that piece that's came off, so... Trying to make it a sort of different... Yeah. Just don't like it when it comes off in a sort of kind of more kind of sort of contrived. You can help it along with a little bit of water. Oh, it helps if I spray it not at me. And maybe some here along the edge. And back to the wet cloth. cloth and I think I'm going to put some water up in this corner and try to pull some off here just enough like that just enough to give it a like a suggestion of it's worn not it doesn't need to be a big patch that I'm wiping that's nice there, I like that. So we can kind of recreate that around this, this edge here. I'm wiping up like that. This edge, I'm gonna take right off there, that edge there, and maybe this here. Now, This is just a kind of a light touch. Yeah, that's quite nice. Doing the same with the other leg. Just remember the back as well because people are going to be looking at the furniture from all angles so it has to kind of look. I think that I'm, I'm tempted not to touch any more of this part here. That's kind of Give it a little bit of definition around there. Yep, and I've got it at that side. I've already kind of wiped this bit away, so I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, so back leg. And I think this is the best time if you're going to do some wet distress is now when it's easy to come off. You can go back when it's completely dry and lots of people do, but this is the time for me, especially when it's saturated with water. Right, I'm gonna work on the top half now and we'll just fast forward that part so that it's not too laborious for you. Right, so this is day two. Everything has to be completely cured and dried before you kind of do any other work. It's just gonna to blend together and make a mess. Hence the reason why, I mean, you've probably realised this, that I'm not working in the stable right now. Um, I'm actually working in the boot room at my house just because the stable's just too cold and it takes too long for the paint to dry. I'll be moving back there in about four weeks. So this has been, compl this is completely dry, um, ready to paint. Now, I've mixed in this pot here another custom, which is Emperor's Silk by Annie Sloan and Barcelona Orange, also Annie Sloan, and I've mixed this corally orangey colour and what I'm going to do is I'm only painting the backs hence the reason why I've taped off the sides I want these shells to be natural and they're going to get a good clean one this is all being painted so I'm just going to get on and I'm going to give this two coats of this two solid coats and we can go back and distress it and again I'm applying it in chalk brush a uh, chalk paint sort of motions you know that cross hatch sort of pattern to build up texture I don't I'm not looking for um, smooth. I'm looking for something that when I eventually go to wax that I can get some nice texture with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to paint the back of this and then we'll get on to what we're doing next. So I've done two coats 
of this sort of corally orange. Now, it could probably be doing, in any other circumstances, a third coat, but you can't have this distressed and this too pristine. So I've decided to leave it with the sort of darker bits here and there. I don't think that's a problem. Now, what I've done is I've taken some of the coral and I've put it a little bit of distress on the top of the doors and some here on the piece and just kind of touched it here and there and I'll show you how I did that up the top. I just got some paint on my brush, not a huge amount, and I just decided where I was wanting to put it. Now, there's a sort of kind of symmetry of how it works. So this bit here is on this top of the door, this bit's down here. So I'm thinking possibly just this bit here. And all I'm doing is I'm just making it look like it's been either touched with paint and to make it look a bit more natural if you kind of do your strokes. So it's nothing too heavy. It's not like a wet distress with a palette knife or anything. It's just like a kind of hint that it's been there. And you can do some bits a little bit thicker. So I'm going to do a thick bit in here. Now that's too splodgy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather that out and bring that across like it's leading somewhere. And that's the trick to making things look natural. If it's a splodgy shape, then, yeah. I'm going to fix this bit here. Keep pulling the paint along. And pull the paint along here so it goes up and down. A little bit on here, because that's came from there. And a little bit up here. And I think that's all I'm going to put of that on this piece here. So we can get rid of our coral colour paint now and now we're going to get on with designing the inside which is going to be a hand painted design and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that right now. So what I've done is I've done some doodles. Now these are not fine art, they're not painterly, they're, they're actually just kind of simple doodles and I was just kind of deciding on sort of colours and what I've done is I've just recreated them inside the piece of furniture. It's going to go this way and it's going to just kind of be not quite symmetrical but go, be the same pattern on both sides across the dresser and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use different coloured chalk paints to paint it in and I'll start now. So I've already done this side here and as I said, I'm doing them, I haven't decided to go for symmetry or anything like that. I'm part way through this part here and here. Now, once this is completely dry and we've done these two sides, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that doodle technique where I'm going to get some watered down black, black acrylic and I'm going to go over this. Then we're going to kind of just slightly maybe distress these edges. But this is kind of taking a bit of time, but it's going to be worth it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry on painting just now until um, until this is done. It shouldn't take me much longer to get this done. So in here I have some Annie Sloan Athenian Black. Now I've added some water. I don't know if you can see that. It's runny, but it's not too runny. It's runny enough that it'll help my brush move. I'm using a script brush. A script brush will keep this very loose and very, very fluid and it'll keep my doodles looking like doodles. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep going and I'm not going to be stilted. I'm going to keep my brush moving so that it's got that movement. So when I kind of start, I'm just going to go until I get to a bit where I can stop and then I'll stop. But so I've got my brush not too overloaded, but enough paint on it. So I am going to start here on this leaf, I think. What I'm doing here is I'm outlining all of my doodles. It sharpens them up and it's going to give it that sort of doodle look. I'm going to do a big line in the middle of there.
it's really good if you practice with a script brush um, if you can write your name uh, it keeps your work nice and tidy gives it a nice outline I'm just really going to go and outline the whole thing so I'm going to kind of stop talking so that this part can be fast forwarded. So this is me just on the last flower. Now this has taken, it's taken a fair amount of time to paint but I think it's one of those things that you know it just kind of lifts your furniture because it's got the chicken wire at the front of the cabinet as the chicken wire in, I really wanted to make a sort of real statement behind the chicken wire. So this is why I sort of chose something like this. And as you can see, this, this design just came from a simple doodle. Nothing complicated. I just kept it really easy and simple when I drew it out. And I painted it in in block colours. And all I'm doing is out, out, outlining it and highlighting it in black. And that's, that, that's it. I mean... Just have a go and if you want to practice, practice just on a bit of wood or some paper. But just like doodle, just doodle. I doodle all the time and it gives me ideas for things. And sometimes just simple doodle flowers can just be recreated on furniture very easily. So this is just my last flower and I'm just using my script brush just to outline all my, my leaves. like that. So I'm going to put this to the side and we'll soon get to the fun bit of putting the, the cupboard fronts on. We'll set it back upright and we'll have a look at it with the design on it. Okay so we've got the piece back up on its end. Now what I've actually done is I've given it a whole really good coat of clear wax because now I'm going to apply some dark wax in all of the kind of like relief or just anywhere where I want to kind of make it look a little bit dirtier. If you're going to apply wax, always apply clear wax first before you put your dark on because your dark will stick and it will be very difficult to come off. If you put clear on first, you can wipe it away. And if you do put too much dark wax on something, you can use your clear wax as an eraser to get rid of it. Now, just before we move on, I've got some clear... Um, sealer and I'm going to seal the chicken wire because remember we put the chalk paint onto it so I'm going to seal the whole front of the doors with this sealer this piece has all been sealed and the front of the doors I'm just going to I'm going to seal the whole fronts with this I have painted the hessian to tidy it all up on that side of the door so that's all done and I do have to put some rust and things around the keyhole which I will do once the doors have been put back on but let's do a little bit of this dark wax. I've also clear waxed these shelves too so that um, they just look nice. Um, so where would I want to have some dark wax? Up under there, I think. Maybe along here. Now you can wipe it away with a cloth. I'm just choosing to use my finger. Maybe somewhere in the top edge here. Just going to give it a little bit of kind of age, a little bit of grunge. Um, maybe here. And a lot there, a bit over the edge and maybe now the inside I'm going to keep pretty pristine but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub a little bit of dark wax up up like that just to kind of give it a little bit of um, a little bit of low lights give it a little bit of age Like that. 
not too much just a little suggestion that it's got a little bit grungy maybe some here and over to this side maybe Down this crease at the back because I've got so much nice clear wax on it it's it's moving really well and that's the secret of um, the dark wax so I'm just going to move on and I'm going to do the rest of the dark waxing so here I am over in the stable, I'm braving the weather because I'm staging my piece because it's now finished. I'm just going to do a quick recap of how I put this piece together. It came to us and it had the broken glass here. Martin knocked the glass out and we put chicken wire in, which we then covered with hessian. It was painted one good coat of a custom mix um, colour of green using Annie Sloan's paint. And then what happened, then I did a wet distress and I used various colours to distress and wipe back the paint and then I wet distressed back to the actual wood. I let it dry overnight. I, oh, and I also did the rusty finish on the chicken wire to get rid of that sort of galvanised, like kind of newer look. Over, once it was dry overnight, I painted one the back, um, one solid colour and then gave it another one. And really it could have done with three, but because of this sort of distressed look, I kept it at two. I then drew out a doodle that I had done at the kitchen table onto my piece. A block painted it and then I went over with a fine uh, black uh, paint, Annie Sloan's black paint and a script brush and I just outlined it all. I clear waxed it, I dark waxed it and uh, I clear coat sealed the rust in the, in the doors and this has all been waxed as well. And it's finished, so I'll get Martin to give you um, the glamour shots of how it actually looks. I'll get out of the way. So I've been Lael from Made by Marley. And if you've liked this video and it's inspired you to go on and make th um, new things, um, out of old things then please consider subscribing if you like it tell me why you like it um, give it give it a thumbs up even share it but if you have a furniture technique that you're thinking of or you have an, an old piece of furniture that you'd like to do something on but you're not quite sure or you maybe can't find the video on it why don't you just leave a comment um, in the box below and let me know and I'll next video I'll try and accommodate that thank you <laughs>